In this tutorial, we'll look at how we can combine a stream reader object, which allows us to read data from a text file into our program, and we'll look at how that is combined with data placed into an array. So I have in my form here one button and one list box. When we look up here, you can see I've already got a text file called names, and I've got seven or so names there and now we've got the code. This is the code behind the button at the default click event and then I've got some comments here just to get us started. First of all I need some declarations. To do this I need what's called a stream reader object and in order to make use of this I'm going to go up to the line above public class form 1 and I'm going to type imports system Io. Now what that means is I've just gone to the Microsoft library, I've taken a book off the shelf called system.io. IO is simply short for input output. It will allow me to make use of some special features that aren't in Visual Basic by default. These features such as the stream reader class will allow me to create an object that does a lot of the hard work for me in terms of getting data from a text file into my program. So the, as we can see here with my first comment, we need to declare the stream reader object. So it's almost like a regular variable declaration. Dim, and then whatever we want to call our variable, here I'm going to go SR for short, stream reader, as, and this is where it just gets a little bit different from strings and integers and so forth. Because I'm accessing something in this library book called system.io, I'm going to go as new stream reader. Then I'm going to open the brackets and I'm going to type the name of my file as a string. So it's names.txt. Now I don't have a path to that file, and that's because over here in my solution explorer, whether it was originally down here underneath the form one. I clicked the show all files, I then dragged names.txt into this bin folder and then into the debug folder. And all that really means is as I'm developing this, I can actually refer to this text file over here without actually writing a path to that file. It just means I've got less to write while I'm learning how to use this. Now we can see the next comment is declare an array and an index variable. Now that's going to refer to the current index of the array. So let's say dim names, and let's say I've got an array that can store up to 10 names. And it's string, dim i is integer, and because I want this to refer to the very first index of the array in the first iteration of my loop, I'm going to initialize that to zero, because we know that index zero of the array is the first element there. Now the final comment is loop through the text file contents, adding one name on each iteration to the array. And then I want to show the results of that. So I've got some processing here, and the looping, and the display is the output. Now I'm going to use a do loop here. I don't want to use a for loop, because I won't necessarily know how many names I've got in my text file. Sure, I can look at it here, but what if I had a text file where the number of items was actually unknown? It might even be housed somewhere else in my computer system and I actually have to code the path to that file. I won't necessarily be able to easily open it up every single time I want to write some code. But that's alright, I can use a do loop. So when we're using stream reader object, use a do loop. I quite like to use the do until loop. So do until sr, there's my stream reader object, dot, and I can see a whole lot of things I can do with the stream reader object. The one I want is peek. It literally means have a look at the text file. So do until sr.peek equals negative one. Now what that means is 
when this peak method, something that Microsoft has already written for us, when that sends a value of negative 1 back to our program, it's the equivalent of saying, OK, I've got all the text, all the names from the text file, you can stop running this loop now. So inside this loop, there's a couple of things I want to do. First of all, I want to grab each name and term on each iteration of the loop and pop it into the current index of the array. So my array is called names and the index is i. So names i equals or is assigned the value of sr dot read line. So one line at a time is going to be put into the current index of the array. Now I want to increment this index i equals i plus 1 or i plus equals 1 does the same thing. And just to prove this point of reading one name at a time in between these two lines I'm going to put a message box simply for the purposes of demonstration here we'll get rid of it later. And I want to show the current index of that array. So when I run this program click the button the first name, Donald Duck, appears, then Mickey Mouse, and so on and so on, until I've got all names from the array. But at the moment we still can't see these names because we haven't coded any output. So why don't we do that here? If I go list names dot items dot add. What am I adding? I'm adding the contents of the current index of the array before I then increment that index. The final thing I need to do is turn off the tap. In other words, close the stream reader object. If up here when I declared my stream reader object, I was effectively turning on a tap by doing two things creating the object itself with a declaration and then associating it with a particular text file. So now I don't want any what's called memory leaks which can actually crash my program. So I'm going to go sr.close. And if I really don't need to ever use a stream reader object again I can go sr.dispose which will actually remove it from memory as well. 